A beloved science museum in San Francisco is preparing to reopen at its new home along the Embarcadero, speaking of tourist destinations, built at a cost of $300 million. The Exploratorium lets kids and adults explore science through hands-on exhibits. Here's a sneak peek of the new museum from correspondent Spencer Michaels of the PBS NewsHour. The Exploratorium has a new home on the Embarcadero with glorious views of San Francisco Bay and 150 new exhibits designed to entice kids and their parents into a love of science. Among those exhibits is a whimsical statue of Frank Oppenheimer, founder of the Exploratorium in 1969 and brother of J. Robert Oppenheimer, who pioneered the atomic bomb. Frank started the Exploratorium as a unique museum a place that allowed visitors to interact with the exhibits. In their old quarters at the Palace of Fine Arts, you could touch everything, get your hands dirty, and experience scientific phenomena firsthand. I've been a member for 12 years. I love this auditorium. You can experiment, tinker with everything, and that's why I think this is great. These exhibits and the aura around them inspired other science centers around the world, more than 600 of them. The Exploratorium essentially tested the theory that hands-on learning is the best way to teach and learn science, especially in a time when science and technology are sought after national commodities. One of the greatest things you can do as a staff member here is just to watch visitors and how they laugh and smile and enjoy interacting with the exhibits that we've created. Let that one drop a bit. Paul Doherty, a senior staff scientist, translates his knowledge of physics into displays that he says help teach science. This exhibit is about the impact of copper on magnets. As soon as a person comes over and begins to interact with it, that brings the exhibit to life. And if you watch, the person comes to life as well. As the Exploratorium matured, it expanded, exporting its model of hands-on learning as far away as Turkey and even to monks in India. It outgrew its old quarters and when it couldn't expand, sought space elsewhere. With much fanfare, the nonprofit organization launched its new high tech solar powered building on Pier 15 in San Francisco. They invited the press to preview the spectacular architecture and to showcase what they're calling a premier science education institution. As successful as the Exploratorium has been in expanding and in inspiring other scientific centers, it raises a basic question. How do kids learn science, and do they need something besides school? Rob Semper is associate director and a former university physicist. School is very important. Reading textbooks is very important to learn science or to learn about nature. But having a real experience is also important. So you actually need both. And in fact, uh, laboratories and schools often don't do enough to help people really experience some of the phenomenon on their own. A place like this can really help that happen. Take this tinkering clock, for example. Can it teach kids science? I've seen people stare at the mechanism, get really intrigued by how does that work? Why did it do it that way? They're spending time actively trying to figure things out. In school, often you're in a curriculum. It's being led by the teacher or by the curriculum. You go through different stages. Here, you actually have to follow your own path. And that turns out to be really important because people really are the learners. People do the learning. It's an active process. And this place helps you do that. But while big science centers like the Exploratorium can be exciting, some educators take a smaller, more concentrated approach to appeal to poor and underserved kids. Dan Sudrin runs the Mission Science Workshop in San Francisco in a former high school auto shop. Much of the material available here he gathered himself on a tight budget. For the kids he serves, it's essentially free. What we're doing is going into primarily poor neighborhoods and cities in California, starting with San Francisco, and just trying to get some space and trying to get some kids together and get some support. Sudrun began his workshop two decades ago, 
Today, a class of fourth graders walked a few blocks from nearby McKinley School to come learn about animal habitats. Or not last. Next, we have defenses. Most grade school teachers must cover every subject from history to art to science on their own. But fourth grade teacher Robert Savant says he needs more support if he's to teach science in a robust fashion. I can teach and teach in class and they'll get a portion, but here it really cements what I've taught in class. Sudrin credits the Exploratorium for its pioneering approach and even for donating old exhibits to his outfit. But he says that smaller is better. He's started small science workshops in places like Greenfield, south of Salinas. I'm working in east side of Salinas, down in Fresno County also. And those kids, could they might as well be 10,000 miles away from, from San Francisco. These are poor rural areas. They're poor rural areas. Fresno County is considered the Appalachia of California. Sudrin's Mission Science Workshop is dependent largely on Sudrin himself. The Exploratorium is a different breed, a well-organized, well-funded, and well-designed center that also includes training to help teachers bring more hands-on science into their classrooms. These teachers come here wanting to learn how to make their classrooms more hands-on, more inquiry-rich, and this museum is really all about that. So they come to us and we teach them literally how to take these large $50,000 exhibits and make small tabletop versions of them for their classrooms. The goal of both science centers is the same, to inspire a keen interest in science by piquing the imaginations of visitors, children, parents, and teachers. And both have lasted long enough to show that they work. That's Spencer Michaels reporting. The new Exploratorium opens on April 17th. We have more details on the museum and on the Mission Science Workshop online at kqed.org slash this week.